this is the second part of our tutorials on our template so we've got our template uh, sorted out sorted out and we've opened it up and we want to start making a track now the next thing we want to do is look at um, ghost kicks compression parallel compression that kind of stuff because that's the kind of thing that people want to know uh, and haven't normally done before I'm gonna try and stop scratching my face <laughs> alright so what we need to do is we need to um, open up uh, first of all I think what we want to do um, we've got our base track in there we want to open up an instrument track and I'm gonna color it the same color as my drums which is pink and uh, I'm gonna load up a sampler I think that's what I want to do um, some people like using samplers some people like using the actual wave files and that's up to you I'm going to use the sampler today if I can find it. Uh, one thing I noticed too with the changes in, in the update of the program is some things have moved around. Uh, sampler, there we go. So now I've got a sampler in there. Uh, we need to do a couple of things. Now we've got this velocity sensitive thing um, which you can turn on and off. Because it's drums and I want them to be banging, I'm going to leave it on like that. Uh, there's a couple of ways we can do the ghost kick. Um, we can actually use the actual drum track itself, or we can use a, another track which is going to be a ghost track. So let's actually do it this way first. We're going to call this ghost. Um, we're going to select the output and we're going to change it to no output. Uh, and we're also going to set the volume to. <laughs> Come on. This used to work, man. This actually used to work. And now it's doing some derpy things, man. See, so that's a zero. Right, there we go. And um, I'm going to save this as before I wreck my template. Um, projects. Live stream. Ghost. Ghoster. Uh, that, there we go, that'll work. Um, so we've got a ghost kick here. Set the volume to zero. Uh, we've got nothing loaded in here. Now this is where it gets complicated because some people like to have a really short, really short kick um, and use that as a compressor. Some people like to use the actual kick drum they're using in the track to make the compression. Um, you can have an argument about that if you like, but um, we are going to use a shorter kick I think some people actually use like a, a, a perk or something like that something really snappy um, just to send a signal to the bass and then they can do whatever they want there and I think that, that's kind of a good way to do it because if we get like a really long kick drum with a really long tail we get this problem with the side chain where it stays on for so long it gives you that real massive pumping effect but it actually sounds weird so let's try and find um, Let's, let's actually try and find a perk and see if we can find anything that's um, going to work for us. <laughs> How can that, that's not, basically it's loaded up percussion. Um, Let's try. Okay, let's try this one. Um, it's got an out coming through. Let's turn it back to master so we can hear it. Gonna turn off the. Um, down here, there's like a little keyboard button which allows you to play that sound over your keyboard. I'm gonna turn that off. We just want the sound coming through. Okay, and the other thing I want to do too is actually turn that to mono. I don't want this to be, um, I don't want it to be coming through in stereo at all. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to load up a tool. Then I'm going to turn the width all the way down. Now that's dead center. I'm trying to, I'm going to get rid of the, I'm going to hit the little R down here. The release time, turn that down. Now 
really quick um, click. Okay, so I'm going to turn that back off to no output. That is now, I'm going to move that up just underneath my separator. So I've got ghost here. Now, uh, what you do there is you, um, actually let me delete that and explain what I'm doing. So I've just selected the ghost channel here. I'm just going to double click anywhere in here on my on my channel. That's going to create a new empty clip. And then if I double click on that, I come down to here. And I'm just going to paint in um, just, I guess, I guess we could do it all the way across. But let's just go half half notes and then we'll just um, do a little 4-4 four, four, bit like that. So now we're getting, um, let's loop this, change the BPM to about 126. So now we're getting signal sent through on the ghost channel, you can't hear it. If I put it back to master, you can hear that now, I'm going to make it no output again. And that's constantly going to send a signal now through uh, my whole track. So if I pull this all the way to the end of my track, there's going to be a, a ghost signal going all the way through. Now people prefer this because what happens when you start affecting the bass channel with a kick and side chaining it, you get the pumping effect. But when there's no kick, uh, the releaser, um, sorry, the compressor releases, and then you get this really loud bass. Now there are ways of fixing that, but some people like to have that kick go all the way through the whole track so that when the kick drops out you still get that pumping effect from the bass but for the bass but the bass doesn't get louder that's why people prefer using ghost kicks all right now we've done that um we've got our bass and which is kind of uh, a little bit a little bit low some of you might not be able to hear that on your speakers let's um Let's uh, grunge it up a bit. So now I'm just playing around with the preset. Alright, that's cool. Um, now we just need to choose our kick. And so let's grab a kick. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, duplicate our ghost kick. Now I'm going to rename this um, kick. You can call your kick whatever you want. I'm calling mine kick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we just need to change out, um, need to put that back to master, so we should hear that sound. So our um, ghost kick is still um, going out to nowhere, and our main kick is now coming out to master. So we need to find a kick now for our kick, because um, at the moment that's no good to us at all. Let's go try a 909. Um, scrolling down. It's collapse. It's a dirty long. That's kind of a techno sounding kick, isn't it? <laughs> that is really loud. Alright, so I'm going to turn this down. Um, I like to set my kick drum around about negative 12. This is one of the reasons why we put on the master our limiter. In case we drop a sound on and we blow ourselves up, blow your monitors up. Alright, so we've got our kick coming through and we've also got our sidechain signal coming through. So now what we can do is we can go up to our bass bus. Actually let's put a little let's put a little bass line down. So I'm gonna select the bass and we're gonna go It sounds It sounds like that's the right tune, the right note. For the sake of the demo and the, for the sake of your ears and for the sake of time, we'll leave that as that. That's sounding pretty cool though.
what we need to do there is we need to throw a, a compressor on this. We do, we have to. I'm just getting a little bit hypnotized by that sound. So let's go to the bass bus now. And let's take a look at what's going on here. So we've got our dynamics um, processor, which we're kind of doing like an SSL sort of type compression settings. So let's turn it on and off. That's really nice. That's parallel compression going on at 80%. We've got an EQ, which is taking off the real low end. Okay, so we, we forget to do it down here. And now we've got our dynamics, which is our um, which is our um, side chain. So now we need to select our device input. So we're going to select device input down here. And we're going to select our ghost. Um, you can choose pre and post. I'm going to choose post. Straight away, we get the pump. <laughs> um, this compressor is set up pretty much right away to do do the work. And we can select the mix now. I actually really like the sound of that. And so what what really I guess the argument really is about, do you use the kick that you that you're actually using in the track or something else that sends a signal to the compressor? Now the reason why you'd use a short sound to do the compression is you want the bass to duck out from the first part of the, the kick, which is the punch and the, the click. And the tail you kind of want it sort of to blend back together again. So if you use the original kick then um, you're going to get the compressor hammering down, holding on, then letting go at the, at the tail, and then you can kind of get this really sort of weird sounding bass and kick thing happening. So you really need to sort of tune them together. I'm not going to spend time doing that today. But it's sounding all right how it is. And that's pretty much it. Um, it's, that's pretty simple. That is uh, setting up a ghost kick, which is there. We're also doing parallel compression, which is um, we're parallel compressing our um, our com main compressor on the bus. We're uh, also parallel comp we're also parallel processing um, our side chain, which we can choose to have on 100% or sort of mix it in. So we're kind of getting a blending of both sounds, uh, which is really really cool. So we can actually. Um, we can actually mute this. This is what's really cool. I haven't shown, shown you this yet, but you can actually mute this dynamics compressor. This is the actual dry sound we're sending in to the master. I really like this feature. This is really cool. So I can now listen to how my bass and my kick are, are working together with the dry mix. So there's there's not much. There's no. There's actually no. Um, side chaining on the sound so we can like add in as much of that as we want to take it away um, which is really nice and then we can also well I mean soloing it doesn't really make a difference it's actually just affecting what's happening so that's pretty cool oh, I like this all right um, that's that and then we do the same thing with our synths um, we can now go to our synth bus and we can look at our device input and we can also choose ghost and post and now it's also going to affect any synth we send to the synth bus um, we should probably do the same thing actually for our template we should have actually set up um, a side chain on the effects bus too um, some people like to do that uh, we need to open that up now and also select the input for that which is ghost post 
there we go we're all set up um that's it now we can start working on our track and build it and just go nuts all right hope you've enjoyed that tutorial um it's not super duper amazing but i think it's kind of helpful uh for people starting out in bitwig and uh i mean bitwig has got everything you need so go hard i'll catch you next time later <laughs> uh.